Hi guys, my name is Suchit Ligare, and I'm excited to talk to you today about myths of artificial intelligence. Um, just for context, uh, I am a senior product manager at Amazon, and this presentation is based on essentially the myths that I've experienced in my uh, career at Amazon and even prior um, as a product manager. Um, so let's jump right into it. Before we get started, I would love to talk to you about myself and my journey here. So uh, I have a background in tech uh, and a degree in engineering. So I graduated from University of Virginia with uh, electrical engineering and computer science. And right after graduation, I uh, work, started working at a small startup called alum.com uh, based in Washington, DC area. So it was an early startup um, in the smart home space. And this is before smart home was like much more popular. So started there, I was there for a total of five years. Initially started as a hardware developer and uh, over the last few years or so got into product management. Uh, I ended up loving product management a lot. So I decided to quit my startup and went back to school to, do, to get my MBA from Georgetown University. So there uh, I, did a full-time two-year MBA program and pretty much focused on startups and entrepreneurship and product management. So um, after two years, right after that, I got a job as a product manager at Amazon. Uh, at that time, Amazon was not even a profitable company. So much more smaller, budding kind of company uh, out in the West Coast. So within Amazon, I've been at Amazon for about five years now. And I've had the opportunity to work on a lot of different products within it, different teams. So um, in total, I've kind of launched four different products and teams within Amazon. So one of my first products or teams in Amazon was a combination of Kindle and Alexa. So this is prior to Alexa being you know, much more popular, but essentially we built the first ever knowledge graph based on books knowledge of Kindle. So think of it as an algorithm that has read every single book out there ever published by Kindle and can uh, you know, answer books related questions from Alexa. So who is Harry Potter? What school did he go to? What's his wife's name? What's his dog's name? So kind of extracting books related information through, um, you know, through Kindle's books knowledge and surfacing to Alexa. So launch that product uh, was hugely successful and then moved on to another team within Amazon called Silk. So Amazon Silk is a web browser, Amazon's own web browser for Fire tablets and Fire TV. So within Silk, I was in charge of increasing the customer base and revenue for the browser business and worked on Silk on tablets and eventually launched Silk on Fire TV and helped kind of grow customer base there. Uh, did that for a good solid two years and then joined uh, Alexa Smart Homes team where I worked on Alexa sound detections. So there, uh, my team built machine learning algorithms to detect certain household sounds such as dog barking or baby crying or someone coughing or snoring. So essentially, uh, train these ML algorithms to detect these sounds. And we just recently launched that out. And very recently, I started working on a new project within Amazon uh, in, in the FinTech field. So that's my journey. And uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's get into it. So today's agenda, my agenda is very simple. I've identified five different myths, uh, you know, just based on common kind of conceptions and this is more like a myth buster episode uh, for artificial intelligence. So the five myths are uh, artificial intelligence is a new trend in the tech industry. Second, artificial intelligence or AI and machine learning or ML are interchangeable words. Third, AI is always smart and 100% objective. Um, fourth, ML is way too complicated and expensive for my project. And fifth, AI and ML are only applicable in the tech industry. 
not really applicable outside of it. So before we get into everything, I wanted to tell you guys why you guys should care. Uh, you know, typically AI and ML are more for um, used in the tech world. So uh, developers and um, data scientists kind of are much more closer to machine learning and artificial intelligence. So why you as product folks should care about artificial intelligence and machine learning? Well, there are a few reasons. Uh, first one is just kind of misuse of buzzwords. And I've heard that and seen that a lot where people, especially in product, just don't understand much about artificial intelligence or machine learning. And they kind of just use uh, you know, these hot buzzwords like ML and AI in, in everyday kind of usage or in projects where you, do, you don't really necessarily need AI or ML. Um, secondly, there's a black box mentality of what machine learning or artificial intelligence does. And, you know, as people who are not in the tech industry, uh, for them, usually it's something like, you know, AI or ML, something like a box where you put in something and this algorithm will solve all your problems. And in reality, it's not really like that. Um, so the main purpose of this kind of uh, webinar is for you to understand what can AI do and what cannot it do. And that's really important because you don't want to use machine learning or artificial intelligence where you don't need it. And vice versa, you want to use AI where it makes sense. So to kind of illustrate this point a little bit more, got a very fictional kind of example here. Um, if you are familiar with the show Silicon Valley, you will get this reference, but essentially the, you know, uh, just let's say if you wanted to, you know, schedule a meeting with your friends or with, with your leaders, um, the guy on the left is saying, you know, hey, he can, you know, I can download everyone's calendars, get all the data, build a machine learning model and figure out the right best time for everyone to meet and where. Uh, and the person on the right just says, well, you don't need to do get into all these complex details. We can just meet on Saturday, right? So this is an example where you don't necessarily need an ML and an overcomplicated things. Uh, so this is why you should care. And then jumping right into it, our first myth, AI is a new trend in the industry. So this is definitely not true. And let me give you a really quick history of AI. So artificial intelligence, the, the term was coined in the 1950s. So people, especially data scientists, computer scientists, uh, anybody in the tech industry, they've been using this term artificial intelligence for half a century, more than that now. Uh, and essentially, technically, AI consists of any logical software program that computer scientists can develop. So, you know, it's essentially something that can simulate human intelligence and that basically artificial intelligence. So what's new now and why all of a sudden we've been hearing AI and ML in the past, like just a few years, right? Just five years or so. There's two reasons for that. One being uh, improved hardware. And what, that, what I mean is computers these days perform so many complex computations in, in literally fractions of seconds. So compared to just a decade back in like 2010s, today's computer chips perform literally trillions and trillions of just computations and, and equa equation solvings in, in, a, in a second. That's super important for artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms. Uh, secondly, uh, if there's one thing to know about machine learning is it requires a lot of data, like significant amount of data. So what's changed now is, as you guys know, we have a lot more available data. So we have data on every topic you can imagine. Uh, and and it's, it's a lot more, you know, some, some of it is noisy data, some of it is structured data, but in general, we have a lot of data available. And not only that, we, uh, we have historical data now going back to at least a decade where because, you know, thanks to cheaper stories, such as, you know, because of cheaper uh, hard drive or solid state drives or cheaper um, cloud storage, people don't need to delete their data. So we have a lot of historical data and we have more types of data today than just a decade back. 
So all of this makes artificial intelligence and machine learning much more feasible now. Um, it's not a new trend. It's been there out there, except it, will, it would just take a long time for a, a machine learning algorithm to actually give you an output in the past. And it was just not practical enough. Now it's much more easier. Um, and just to continue this, machine learning is, you know, it's a, it's a fancy word, but what it really means, it's, it's just an enhanced regression analysis. Uh, or another word of saying this, it's, it's, a, it's a pattern recognition. Uh, so, you know, you basically have a, a regression analysis model or like an equation that detects a pattern. And essentially all you're doing is giving it a training data set you're learning or teaching the model, you're getting an output of the, the new data, you're validating that, and then you're kind of feeding it back into uh, the algorithm as an input for next time. So this helps because uh, essentially what's new now is now you have a lot of training data set, now you have a lot of data available, and uh, now you can redo, rerun this cycle literally billion times or maybe more uh, very quickly because of the computation problem. So these things make AI and machine learning seem like a new trend, but it's been there for a while and it's just now a lot more feasible to do. So that's essentially myth one. Myth two, this is one of my favorites. AI and ML are interchangeable words. And uh, I've heard this a lot. Uh, this is especially true within product folks and leadership and even senior leadership. So I've heard this from uh, you know, directors and CEOs where they would interchangeably use words like AI and ML to mean the same things when they're not. Um, so it's a lot more different. Let me go briefly through what the differences are. So artificial intelligence as I mentioned before, is technically any sort of like uh, an algorithm that a computer program programmer can develop and write. So any sort of logic, any sort of um, you know computer software is considered artificial intelligence. So examples of that is any kind of you know, computer software you've seen, video games. These are all uh, softwares that people can type in. You can build this based on logic. And that's classified as artificial intelligence. Now, machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence where it's a type of AI that learns from past historical data and it detects patterns based on the data. So that pattern detection is super useful because the output of machine learning algorithm is essentially you kind of extrapolate and build new data sets. So based on past data, you can figure out recommendations. You can figure out what, you know, you can do a lot of predictions, prediction algorithms. So, and that's what machine learning means. It's you give it a bunch of input data set, you train a pattern recognition or detection algorithm, and you get an output that tells you how closely something will happen. What, what is the propensity or what is the probability that something new belongs to this pattern? So an example for, the, for this that everyone knows is, you know, is Netflix recommendation or you know, Amazon recommendation, any sort of recommendations. Now there's a, another sort of third uh, set of artificial intelligence called deep learning. And not a lot of people are aware of this yet, but essentially deep learning is a subset of even a machine learning. So it's a, it's, it's a smaller part of machine learning where Essentially, the, the machine itself develops algorithm. So we don't have to, we don't have to code uh, the pattern recognition algorithm. Uh, the machine itself figures out what are the right uh, ways to detect a pattern. And um, it's also called artificial neural network or ANN, but uh, essentially you see this a lot in self-driving cars. So this is all well and good. But what does this really mean in practical life? Um, I want to walk you guys through an example of facial recognition software. So let's say you are a product manager 
or a product person uh, in a company and you guys, your team needs to develop a facial recognition software, right? So let's go through the three different ways of how to do it. Let's say with artificial intelligence, the way to do this is to, to develop heuristics to detect facial features, right? So you can tell a programmer that, you know, hey, let's build some sort of software that can detect a circular, you know, typically a circular face it should have two dark pupils. It's on the top one third. Uh, it should have a, a hole in the for the for a nose in the middle of the circle, and towards the bottom one third, you have an oval mouth. And you know, based on these heuristics, you can get a pretty decent facial recognition software. Uh, and this this is how it worked up until the 2010s. Uh, you know, and this can get these heuristics can get super complex. So. The more complex you uh, heuristics you develop, the the more accurate your algorithm is, and that's essentially artificial intelligence. Um, now, let's say you want to do this in a machine learning way. The way to do this, so first of all, this requires a lot more structured data. By structured data, what I mean is you need a set of data to train the model. So you have your machine learning algorithm. And you need to feed in, say, a million images of faces, of what faces look like, and also a million images of non-faces or what it would not look like. And essentially, both these sets are important because faces tells the algorithm of what it's looking for, and non-faces lets it correct when it's wrong. So based on this, you kind of the algorithm kind of feeds the, the output within itself and learns more from it. Uh, and essentially then the machine learning algorithm, you know, that's how you would develop a facial recognition software is you take an ML algorithm, you feed it data, and the output is that you can detect faces or not faces to a level of accuracy. Now, let's say we have to do this through deep learning. So this requires a lot more data, but it doesn't have to be structured. So typically it requires um, 100 times more data. So we're talking about 50 million or 100 million images. They don't have to be labeled as faces or not faces. You feed in all of these images to a deep learning model and the algorithm kind of comes up with, it, with its own layers, such as does it have eyes? Does it have ears? Does it have one nose, one mouth, things like that. And all you're doing is you're looking at the output and figuring out if that's accurate or not. So that's how you know a deep learning algorithm works. Um, this is over. This is a very very high level overview of what artificial intelligence means and how, how what machine learning means and what deep learning means. Um, I would highly recommend you to like you know go look into how these work and get a little bit more information. But at the end of the day. AI is not the same as ML and definitely not the same as deep learning. And as product folks, you should know when to use those terms and when not. Next, AI is always smart and 100% objective. So I've heard this a lot, again, among people uh, who are, uh, who are non, on, non developers and non tech side. So product folks who usually will just take the output of AI or machine learning algorithm as the source of truth. And while that may be true for most cases, it's not always accurate. Um, essentially, you know, um, that an ML algorithm is just as good as the data we feed it. So if you feed it bad data set, or if you feed it noisy data, the output you're gonna get is not that accurate. Uh, or better, or a lot of times ML algorithms have subconscious bias. Um, and contrary to what people can say, data can lie. And machine learning algorithms will amplify the bias. So I've got two examples here to kind of illustrate these points. Uh, the first is a very kind of a very well-known example of bias against diversity, where a company, a big company, uh, had this really genius idea of using a machine learning algorithm to uh, weed out, to go through all the resumes that get you know, sent to their company and select the best applicant. So they, this is a great idea. 
they developed a machine learning algorithm. The problem was they used the data they used to, to train this algorithm was from their own employees. They used the employees that they currently have, they used their resumes and they trained the algorithm based on these resumes. As it turns out, most of the people in their company were, were kind of, they were not diverse companies. So they, they were kind of, you know, they had a typical kind of applicant who, or an employee who worked there, you know, um, same kind of uh, non-diverse, but one kind of gender, uh, not too much, um, you know, they all kind of had very similar kind of like, uh, um, uh, they went to all like bigger universities, Ivy Leagues and things like that. So what happened is the machine learning algorithm did its job and learned from these resumes. And it learned that candidates who have exactly these categories are the ones we require and the other ones we don't need. And they, it, the machine learning algorithm started discriminating against diverse applicants outside of that typical, you know, um, characteristics. So that essentially is a subconscious bias, and it's it's definitely amplified in in a use case like this. Similar example where um, where you see a bias against countries, where let's say you're a product manager or product uh, project manager for a global country company that does business all over the world, but just happens that your biggest customer base is in US. So now let's say you want to build a build a machine learning algorithm to understand like what, what kind of products are going to be trending next year based on the data. Uh, because your because most of your users are based in US, the machine learning algorithm will learn that that uh, customers or users based in US are much more favorable than non-US users. And it's going to predict, uh, you know, it's, it's trends based on US kind of uh, uh, data. And it kind of discriminates against other kind of countries. So there's a bias thing. And you as product people have to understand when is when will that bias come in play and and when to when will it not and how how do you uh, you know tweak that how do you make sure that this bias doesn't show up uh myth four machine learning is way too complicated and expensive for my team and project so this is an interesting uh myth it's kind of true but not because the machine learning algorithm is uh, is is difficult. Um, I think people think that to to build a machine learning algorithm, you have to hire data scientists or specialists uh, um, that will actually develop this machine learning algorithm, and you know they will kind of build this from scratch. Um, in majority of the cases, uh, I want to say ninety five plus percent cases. Um, nobody actually develops the actual machine learning algorithm. Most of the times people just use open source libraries such as uh, TensorFlow or Python libraries or any of the um, you know, softwares or, or tools available to AWS or Google Cloud Platform or, or Azure. Um, and you, you just, so the actual machine learning algorithm is pretty easy. You just use one of the existing algorithms. The hard part, is, and this is where you come in as a product person, is to figure out where do you get the data from? How do you make sure, like how much data do you need and how do you get that data? Um, how, uh, how do you make sure that the data is, is not biased? How do you make sure it's not noisy? Um, how do you make sure that the data is, like it's, it's a clean data set? And on the output side, you have to make sure that the output it's giving you is accurate too. And um, that's a loaded question too. What kind of accuracy are you looking for? So it's impossible to, to, to get a data machine learning algorithm that predicts 100% of the time, right? So what is the right percentage of accuracy? Um, is 90% good? Is 99% good? What about 60%, 70%? Um, and obviously the answer depends on application to application. Um, some applications require a high level of accuracy and others don't. 
And the more accurate you want, the more data you need to feed it. So, you know, while working on, um, in my personal example, when, uh, while working on something like uh, a machine learning algorithm that uh, detects a security fraud, we want it to be super highly accurate. So we need a ton of data set to make sure that the machine learning algorithm is trained properly. Whereas sometimes others where, uh, you know, there's a lot of other kind of uh, um, uh, applications where you're just trying to recommend a big a genre, say. You don't need too much accurate information there. You know, you you may be okay with 60, 70, 80% accuracy, and you don't need that much data set. So depending on the application, you as a product person you have to figure out what is the right level of accuracy your application requires. And so that's the hard part. So dealing with data, getting that data set, cleaning it, making sure it's not biased. Um, you have to think about is the machine learning output, is that ethical? There's, a, there's a, you know, a ethics in AI as well. And so those are the hard parts. So ML is not complicated for your product because of the complexity of the algorithm itself. It's essentially difficult because you as a product manager have to figure out is there a data set you can get uh, or purchase to, to make this feasible? And that becomes really difficult. And then the last myth I have uh, is, I've heard this a lot again, which is AI and ML are only applicable in the tech industry. This is 100% not true. And I think traditionally it has been kind of affiliated with the tech industry, but you know, again, in the past like three or four years, um, I'm here to tell you that every single industry uh, uses AI in some form or other. So, um, I worked at Amazon and Amazon in so many different industries, and there's rarely a team at Amazon that does not use machine learning algorithms. Uh, so it's very common. And um, here are, I've, I've put together a few examples of different industries and examples of what they use machine learning for. So, for example, in finance, uh, finance was one of the first industries that accepted machine learning algorithms because of the amount of data and the level of accuracy they require. So um, as well as the stock market, right? There's a lot of like uh, prediction algorithms that, that, that use machine learning. Um, so in finance, some of the examples are, as I mentioned, stock market predictions, uh, robo investments, which is a very kind of recent uh, product and service uh, a lot of companies are offering. Fraud detection is a big kind of uh, use case. Risk assessment and management, that's a big use case. Uh, in the marketing industry or ads industry, uh, you use machine learning algorithms to understand sentiment analysis for from customers, uh, you know, customers' feedback. Uh, you used to detect knockoff products, so like you know, products that are not, you know, that just claim they're from their Nikes or Louis Vuitton, but they're not really uh, CRM intelligence, uh, or even like to understand fake false reviews and remove those. Uh, or inappropriate reviews, things like that. Um, in the transportation industry, everybody knows about self-driving cars. Uh, they are one of the big use cases of uh, ML and specifically deep learning algorithms. Uh, in healthcare, this has become increasingly more and more useful in healthcare where they use ML algorithms and deep learning algorithms to identify diseases, uh, disease prevention, disease prediction, drug discovery, things like that. Uh, we're in a COVID world and more and more use cases have sprung up for healthcare and machine learning. Uh, real estate, so, you know, this is one of the large industries people think ML and AI is used, but it's used very, very commonly to predict uh, real estate property market values and prices and to understand property recommendations based on your likes and dislikes. Uh, law, again, because of the lot of uh, uh, data and a lot of um, um, paperwork there within the law industry, uh, AI is used to identify legal issues and any contracts instead of going through it manually. So that's a very big use case. And essentially the idea here is whichever industry you are in, chances are AI is already there, machine learning is already there. And this is, you know, this is, you, you, you have to, 
you have to know about it on a baseline. You, you can't go into the industry and um, be a successful product manager without understanding the basics of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. And uh, here's some more, a few examples of what are, you know, in, in some certain cases, uh, ML is smarter or even more accurate than, than, than humans. So a few examples here are in the medical diagnosis fields, uh, AI systems can correctly detect a cancerous disease 87% of the time compared to 86% by healthcare professionals. Um, and more and more AI is used to replace diagnosis field. Um, similarly, in the, in the law field, AI is 10 times more accurate and faster than top human lawyers. That's really great. Um, in, um, you guys must have seen the Google's duplex AI demo where this, this service is making phone calls to set up appointments with humans without the humans knowing that this was an AI. So it's becoming that much more accurate. And lastly, I want to leave you here with AI in the field of art, not just science and math, uh, but in the art where this, this painting on the right called Optimistic Sky, it's one of the first paintings that is fully developed by an algorithm. So this kind of brings up very interesting use cases and questions such as, you know, what is the future of painting in art? Like if, if AI can develop these accurate kind of paintings. So essentially, anywhere you look at every industry, AI is there and uh, it's growing much more faster and kind of just sort of doubles down on the point that you have to learn and know about AI and ML and use it the right way. So essentially that, those were my five kind of takeaways and myths that wanted to kind of bust or, or you know, confirm. The first one being, Artificial intelligence is a new trend in the industry, which we saw it's not really, uh, and it's just sort of a new, uh, newly, uh, you know, it's been popular recently because of uh, technological advances in data and in hardware. Um, secondly, AI and machine learning are interchangeable words, which we looked at, they're much more different, and ML is a subset of AI. Thirdly, AI is always smart and 100% objective. Again, that's not true because it can be biased. It can be, uh, uh, you know, um, non-accurate or not objective based on the, the training it goes through and what kind of data you feed. Fourth, ML is too complicated and expensive for your project. Well, again, that's not always true. It is complicated because of the data you need for it and the amount of data for it but not necessarily from the purely algorithmic perspective. The algorithm, you can get it for free from any of the uh, uh, open source algorithm libraries. And lastly, AI and ML are applicable only in the tech industry. Well, it's not, and almost every company, regardless of industry, I guarantee you is using AI and ML uh, in almost every, so the more you learn about AI, the more uh, advantage you get once you get into the field and, you know, become a successful product coach. So that's essentially my webinar. And just want to thank you for listening through it. Again, this is a very high level um, overview of what is AI, what is ML, and what is deep learning. Uh, I highly recommend you to... Um, you know, learn more about this on, you know, multiple different platforms and just become familiar to the point that you know that you can talk to people about it. Um, feel free to reach me out on my LinkedIn uh, at Suchit Likare and here's my name. Thank you all.